right now, do you feel stuck? Do you really sit there and think to yourself, oh my God, what, how did I even end up here? What does my life even look like right now? I have all of these things that I think I want to do, but I'm not even sure where to start. And I'm just kind of like afraid to even take a chance because I don't even know what that even looks like. Well, we are going to talk about that today. Welcome to episode 42 of the Positivity Experience. Let's get you unstuck. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to episode 42 of the Positivity Experience. I am your girl, Lori. And guys, it has finally gotten to be this like fall weather. I told you guys this last week. It's just every day it's getting more and more folly. And I love every moment of it. And I know a lot of people like get a little stressed out. And, uh, you know, we'll do a whole podcast on like seasonal effective and things to do when you're just like, oh my God, I'm so tired of it being dark at like, oh, dark 30. But I got to tell you, I don't mind a good gray day. And um, yesterday, Salisbury had their um, their homecoming. And so we went down and we got to hang out and just, oh, it was just a good vibe all the way around. So it's like that fall time and I just, it's just a total vibe. So, and this leads me into today's topic. So in the beginning, you heard so many people that I talked to and God, I've been there a hundred times or more, right? Where you're just kind of like, okay, huh, I'm, I'm feeling stuck it, because and, and let's be clear what stuck is, right? Because you think stuck is being stuck in the mud. And very often that's how it feels, right? You're like, oh my God, I'm just stuck in this mud. I just don't feel like I can spin out of it. And here's the reality of it. It really has everything to do with the fact that you're overwhelmed, right? And you're not sure where to start. That's literally what being stuck is. So when we think of like, I'm stuck in this, or I'm stuck doing this, or, you know, I, I don't know where to go, that is an overwhelm. And I said this to you in last week, I think I talked about it last week in the procrastination and motivation podcast, which was, you know, when you feel overwhelmed, you typically will shut down, right? But it's a little different with the whole being stuck situation, because then you shut down, but then you get upset because you're shut down. And you're not really sure about what is going on, how you can get out of it, what that even looks like in an overview, right, of, of everything. And so then you just go, oh my God, I can't do it. So today I wanted to give you the five tips of that, right? Five tips of, let me help you understand what strategies you can start taking to not feel as stuck, or at least give yourself a foundational start to getting unstuck, right? And again, keep in mind, you're not just going to get unstuck after, after one podcast. I mean, it would be great if that was the, the case, but it's not the case. And these are simply tools for you to implement. If you do not implement them, they will not be effective, right? So I could give you the key to life. I could give you the key to joy. But if you're not going to use the key and turn the key, then it's just going to be sit there as a shiny little key, right? It's going to be obsolete. It's going to be unnecessary, really, right? So I want to talk about that. So let's talk about number one, okay? And I'm going to say this is sort of what you might be feeling. And then let me give you some help on how to get out of it. That's how I like to do the five tips. So we're going to start with that right now with tip number one. And tip number one is knowing what it is that you want in the first place. So think about this, you know, you're sitting at home or you're sitting wherever you are right now. Maybe you're in the car. I like to listen to podcasts in the car. So I assume you're in the car um, and you're sitting there and you're like, gosh, I am so tired of doing the same mundane, get up, make the donuts, go home, get up, do the same thing over and over again. Like I'm just, I just, but I don't know where to start. And you say, gosh, there has to be something more than what I'm doing now, whether it be relationships, whether it be work, whether it be self-help, whether it be any of those things but then you're not really sure what that would even look like for you. So what I would love for you to do is get a paper and pen. Obviously, if you're driving, you're not going to do this, but you can go back and reference it at the like five minute mark, four and a half minute mark. And a good thing to do with that is to say, okay, what are things that I enjoy doing, right? Like we've been here before, we've done a similar exercise, but we're going to do things repetitively a lot of times because that's the beautiful thing about the tools that you will get from me or anybody else is it, you're not just going to hear it one time or know it one time. You're going to have to almost be beaten the head with it because repetition creates habit, right? Think about you um, doing something that you do that you're like, oh my God, it's such a bad habit. But it's repetition. So repetition will create a habit. 
And this means you have to shift what the repetition is. So number one is writing down things in which you enjoy doing uh, anything. Seriously, I enjoy hiking. I enjoy walking. I enjoy going for a bike ride. I enjoy reading. I enjoy watching TV, whatever it is that you enjoy. And the reason being is because before you can even say, gosh, there has to be bigger or something more for me than what I'm doing right now or with the person I'm with. You can't just assume that that change is A, going to just happen, or B, is going to fix this sort of empty, stuck feeling of yours, right? So number one, I want you to get clear with the things that you like. Now, make sure they're the things that you like, not the things that you do because it assumingly kind of makes you happy because everybody else is good. That's not what I mean. Things that you enjoy. Think of some things that let's say you are 50, like my age, right? And you think, oh, when I was 20, I used to crochet because you guys know I'm a crochet junkie. Um, And then you just stopped, right? Family happened, life happened, all these things happened. You're like, God, I'd really like to get back to that. I just don't have the time. Okay, well, that's not true. You just have to create the time, right? But that's what I'm saying. Go back and write down things in which you enjoy. Take money out of it for a minute. Take a profession out of it. Take a hobby out of it. Just things that you like, okay? That's going to be your first step because first and foremost, you got to know what you even enjoy before you can even execute on it to get yourself unstuck. So if you're sitting in that space of just the repetition of what you're doing and you're just like, I'm beating my head against the wall and I hate it, well, okay, well, what do you want to do about it? Well, I don't know. I just want more. Well, okay. Well, I'd like to win the lottery numbers. You know what I mean? Like, so it's getting clear in that. Now, the second part of that same exact topic is when you go into that, right? Make sure that you're looking at it. If money wasn't an object, okay? If money was no problem, if I didn't have to worry about money in my life, what would I like to do? Okay. So, and I, and I don't just mean like give back, of course, like we would, if we were multimillionaires, we'd hope we'd give back. I'm talking about what would you like to do? Not what do you think that you should be doing, right? So I want you to get clear on that because that's number one of why you're staying stuck. Now, number two is kind of similar to that, but it's you waiting for other people to approve what that passion is for you, what that new change may be in your life, what that purpose may change out to be in your life, right? You you would like somebody to say, oh my God, that's a great idea. This is great. I, I, I'm supporting you 100% of the way. Yeah, that's not always going to happen. So if you're waiting for someone to sort of give you the green light of saying, hey, this is what I think you should do in life, uh, that it's not, it wasn't a conference call. Your life's goal is not a conference call. Your life's goal wasn't meant to be for somebody else to give you what that goal is, right? Now, you guys know the work I did. I kind of fell into it, right? Between all of my self-healing and going through therapies and then taking education on it and then now creating it as a profession. Yeah, I didn't even contemplate doing this when I was a child, right? I mean, I, I could barely focus on my own self. That was a problem, right? So when you're you're not focusing on you and you're waiting for other people to 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 give you that permission to go follow this dream and do this and this is the right thing, you're literally waiting for someone else to live your life for you. Right? Now, of course, in a perfect world, what would we love? We would love people to be like, oh my God, that's great. I'm here to support you. Great job. Yes. But if you're holding out on that, that's where you are going to struggle and you will stay stuck. And then you will not even take a chance in the first place because no one is telling you what chance it is that you're supposed to take. You're not supposed to take chances based on what somebody else is telling you to take chances on. Now, guidance, right? So like if you're talking to me and I'm like, hey, this is a great idea. This is in your best and highest good. Then you can say, okay, I'm going to take that if I choose to and I'm going to implement it the way that I want to implement it, right? So there are spaces where people can actually help you, but not be the person to decide what it is that you have to do. And you guys know, I work with universal energy. Universal energy is going to come based on whatever's going to be in alignment with you. So even if you think like John down the street really thinks you, you should be a fill in the blank, you know, whatever it is, nurse, doctor, whatever. Okay, if that's not in your best and highest good and not in your alignment, it's just not meant to happen. So it doesn't even matter if somebody else wants you to do it or not. Okay, which also goes into a little bit of why do you need somebody else to tell you which direction to take? Now, that's going to be a deeper issue that you really have to look at in the second one, right? Why do you want somebody else's 
at a girl, at a boy, you go ahead and you do this. This will be great. We got you. Why do you need that? That's where you really want to start sitting and asking yourself, yeah, that's a good question. Why do I need that? Why do I want that? Where is that coming from? Because if you don't know what it is that you like, that's tip one, right? And if you're waiting for somebody to tell you, that's tip two, then you're essentially not even living a life for you, okay? Which goes into tip number three. So number three is I don't want you to do things out of desperation. This goes into the manifestation conversations that we've had is are you desperate? Do you feel like, oh my God, I'm just so miserable. I need to go get a new job, go get a new relationship, try something new. Okay. I want you to ask yourself why you feel the need to do that in the first place, right? Which, hey, by the way, I'm all about that life. Like always want you to grow, always want you to do bigger and better things for yourself. That's amazing. But why do you want to do it? Do you want to do it because you feel alone? Do you want to do it because your relationship doesn't seem fulfilling? Yeah. Do you want to do it because, oh my God, you've been doing the same thing and you're just so bored? Do you, are you doing it out of boredom? And if so, is the boredom really about what you're doing or who you're with? Or is the boredom just because for so long you've been doing all of the things that you think that you're supposed to be doing, right? So this is where the desperation comes into play. Don't be desperate right? Don't think that time exists in any realm, number one, but definitely when it comes to you living your best and highest good, right? It's not a thing. You could be 65, 70 years old and take on something new. You know, I remember, like I said, when my son was in college, um, he was in classes with people who were older than me. There were a few, not a lot, but there were a few people who were starting their whole new journey. But they did so not out of desperation. They did so out of fulfillment to try to better themselves for themselves. And that's why you don't want to be desperate. Because if you're desperate to find this joy, this peace, you know, it's always funny when people say, God, you really love what you do. I absolutely love what I do. However, I also make sure that I take time for me. I disconnect. I, I have a really strict routine with myself as far as when do I disconnect from the internet? When do I disconnect from socials? Um, I'm not going to respond to people typically on the weekends. It's just not going to happen. You know, I mean, I might from time to time, but no, I'm not going to. And yeah, there's a lot of things that I have on my list to do to bring to you guys, but mostly for myself first, right? And then share with you guys. But I can't do everything. And if I start getting desperate and like, this better be released by this date, and then you need to do this, and you got to do this by this time limit. Okay, yes, we like to have goals, but we can't do it out of desperation. And when you are doing it out of desperation, you start trying things that you think that you like, but then you don't like, but then you think it's fast money, and you think that you'll be able to, um, you know, be super successful and get quick, quick, fast money or quick, fast fame. And that's where you got to be really careful. So you will be stuck because out of desperation, you'll be looking for fast fixes. Right. And this is where, you know, your patience level will come into play. And I promise we will do a whole podcast on patience because God, we could do like 50 of them, but we will do one on patience because, I feel like we all feel like we're on this time crunch, right? And I mean, in theory, I guess we are, but we feel like we have to do it. So a lot of times you feel desperate and you get stuck in that desperation because you're like, God, I need to do something new in my life. Oh God, I just want something new. And then you're so desperate to know what that purpose is. Oh my God, why don't I know what this purpose is? I need to know what my purpose is, right? So if you think back, let's go through the first three three tips, right? Number one, you don't even know what you like. Sometimes you you have no clue. Number two, you're waiting for somebody to possibly tell you, hey, this is a great idea. And number three, in addition to that, it's, oh my God, I better hurry up and do it. I better do it so I can feel good about myself. But again, remember, these changes are amazing and they're a beautiful part of your growth cycle, but they're not, it isn't one thing that's just going to make you happy for the rest of your life. And you got to get real clear on that, which is why in step one, where I have you do things in which you like, and I say do so without thinking about it from a fiscal perspective, perspective, you know, it is important because then and only then can you truly decide what it is that you want to do, not just what can you make fast money on, right? Because I mean, my God, you see this all the time. 
right? You see people, I mean, and I'm not talking about the lucky people who just hit the lottery, but I mean, people who have been on the corner slinging because they just kind of had to, and that's fast money. And, or, you know, go rob a bank, like that's fast money. But look at what the alternative to those are, right? Like look at the negatives and which brings to the desperation. Think about it if you're like, okay, I need to be in a relationship. I gotta be in a relationship. I have to be in a relationship. Okay, well, you'll get in a relationship, But then you and I might be having a whole different conversation and you're talking about, oh my God, this person's so toxic and I don't get along with this person, but I am in a relationship. So when you're working from a place of desperation, you're willing to overlook so many red flags or you don't even know the flags. You're like, I don't even see flags. I'm just, I think they're there, but they're imaginations now because I need to be in a relationship. It's the same thing if you're trying to change jobs, trying to change a focus in life, trying to lose weight, trying to balance yourself. If you are doing it out of desperation without patience, you will always find yourself in a space of either having to always chase because you can be successful. You can get that quick money, that quick relationship, that quick thing, but then you're always going to be chasing something else. That's when you find yourself not being satisfied. You know, how many times have you said, God, I feel like I have everything. Like, let's say you have this fancy car and this fancy house and 2.5 kids and, you know, money in the bank and all these things. And you're like, God, why am I not satisfied? Because you do things out of desperation to fill voids. You can't fill internal voids with external sources. Never, ever. Because then you're always going to be looking for that instant peace. Or you know how you you uh, get something quick or you're in a relationship and it's new and you start a new job and it's fine. And But then that new novelty kind of wears off and you're like, oh, God, that penny's not so shiny anymore, Right. That's why you don't do it out of desperation. So taking your time in step one to really get to understand what it is that you want without worrying about what do other people think, right? I mean, it's great to throw ideas, great to say, hey, this is my idea for this brand. Is there anything that you would throw into it? Not this is my idea for a brand. What do you think of the brand? No, this is my idea for the brand. Are there any things that you'd like to contribute to that? You know, something like that. Because the moment you're given up your sort of uh, power over yourself and you go, hey, do you think this is a good idea? Well, then they're going to look and be like, oh my God, I would never take that risk. No, I don't think it's a good idea, right? Because they can only do it based on themselves. So that's number three, okay? Number and number five is my favorite, but we're not in five yet. So let's slow my roll. But okay, so this is where you feeling stuck to, okay? Number four is to understand that in this present space is all the time in which you have. Time only exists in this in this moment. And this is where feeling stuck. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't plan. Absolutely, you should plan. I mean, we all just can't live by the seat of our pants and then just hope things work out. I understand that. I validate that. But when you're constantly in the what if, what would, what could, if you're in that space and you're doing so like you feel that you're out of time, right? So this kind of goes hand in hand with step three, um, or tip three, but it's goes with that desperation, the desperation, because you feel like you're running out of time. This goes into patience too, right? So again, time only exists right now. So in order for yourself, and if you go back to the goals, uh, setting goals and micro goals as a few episodes ago, um, it'll be helpful. Because if you look at what a goal is at the end of your goal, you always start at the end and go backwards, right? You start at the end. It's a rough estimate of what it is that you want. It'll change probably a hundred times. And then you're going to give yourself the steps, right? Monthly, weekly, daily. But here's the deal. If you're desperate to do it and you feel like you're running out of time, then you are going to be like, I would rather just stay where I am because I don't even know if I have the time to do this or I don't have time in a day or these are the big aspirations I want, but then you're not setting the goals to do it. So number four is time and goals. You are wanting your dream. You are wanting your goal. You're not even really clear on that yet, but you will be. And then you go, okay, I am ready to do this. And then you're like, hmm, wow, where am I going to find the time? And I, and then you get these grandiose ideas. I'm going to start a new business. I'm going to do this. Um, trust me, I live it every day right? I always have to rein myself in and just say, nope, this isn't the project that you're on right now. Because every day I try to go four steps ahead in a different project, but I'm not done the project that I'm working on now, which is my book. So 
it, yes, you got to tap in and you say, okay, I'm quote unquote desperate to do something. And then you say, okay, but I want to do all these things. Well, that's not realistic. And then you're going to be like, oh my God, I don't even have time in a day. You know, again, this goes back into the procrastination and motivation podcast where I said to you, you know, if you're trying to clean the entire house in a day, that's not going to be successful for you. And this pertains to you feeling stuck. And honestly, it could be part of cleaning your house. It could be part of organizing your bills. It could be part of life in general. It doesn't always have to be this big, giant life leap. But if you're saying to yourself, I don't have time, and then not creating time and not sitting with a calendar and and putting it down and saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then you wake up on Tuesday and you're like, I don't feel like doing it. You do it anyway right? And so you will be stuck if you're doing it out of desperation and then thinking that you have a time limit and then trying to do 500 things in a non-existent time limit and thinking that you have to do it. And it's it just becomes so convoluted in your headspace and in your energy. So really think about this, right? So now we've had these four tips, right? So if you don't know what you like in the first place, but you want to make a change, that's a problem because you don't know where you're going. Number two, remember, like you're waiting for somebody to tell you they can't, not a conference call. Number three, oh my God, I better hurry up and do this because I feel super miserable. Number four is, and I really better hurry it up because woo wee, like I want to launch this by February. Okay, is it realistic? Probably not. So number four, you know, it goes into your time, it goes into patience, it goes into calendaring. Number four is an overall, hey, let me really slow my roll and get it together, right? So number five, five is where we're going to stick for a minute. And it's my most favorite one. And I know you guys already know it. It is do it scared. And let me tell you why. Because if you are waiting for this perfect scenario to fall into your lap and go, hey, you know what? Go ahead and take this risk because I'm going to tell you right now, you'll be fine. Yeah, you might have a little setback, but you know what? You're going to be fine and you're going to be successful and this is how it's going to work. And in six months, this is going to happen. And in nine months, this is going to happen. And then blah, here we go. Yeah, that's not a thing. So be prepared to face the fear of making the change. That is, if I had to give one tip in the entire existence of life, this would be it. Uh, Not that the other four aren't important, they absolutely are, and there's so many more. But this one is the top, the creme the creme de la creme, right? This is imperative, that you get comfortable with being uncomfortable in your fear. And this will serve you in every area of your life. Will it always work out? It will not, right? I'm not gonna paint a rosy picture. But I will tell you, and I will guarantee you 100% not working out by not taking the risk. And understand this, and I've said this before, in the history of humanity, every successful person has faced a level of failure, which is really learning. So I want you to reframe this fear of failing with, oh, you basically take failure out with learning. Now say that same phrase, I have a fear of learning. You're like, what? What? No, I don't have a fear of learning. I have a fear of fit. No, failure is learning. Things aren't always going to work. Boom, plan A. You might need a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. It's going to be what it's going to be. But if you are waiting for you to know that if you take this risk, that you won't lose money or that you won't uh, lose a relationship or that your friends and family will be okay. And that, okay, if you're waiting for that, you will always stay stuck, stay stuck in your life, stay stuck in a relationship, stay stuck in a job, stay stuck in your own mental space. And this is the biggest thing about fear. Because fear is fake. It's false evidence appearing real. It feels real to you. So I'm not negating it. And I'm not, you know, not validating it. It is real to you. I know every human has fear. I have fear. You have fear. We all have fear. And it's, I think that's a normal part of life right? Just like anxiety is a normal part of life. It just when it gets a little crazy, right? It becomes problematic. But if you are waiting to take a new job, if you are waiting to jump, if you're wait, no, you don't just go, okay, F it, throwing caution to the wind. I mean, sometimes you got to do that, honestly. But you got to say to yourself, what is it that I'm really fearing? Because I'm going to tell you right now, the fear will manifest itself in absolute paralyzation 
of being able to to make a move. You start second guessing yourself. Oh my God, is this the right decision? Why would I do this in the first place? That's really stupid. You know, and you know what? You have to decide what level of discomfort you're willing to accept. But I will tell you that if you're waiting for the fear to go, or if you're waiting for this perfect scenario to be like, okay, now I've identified, Lori, what it is I like. I like to do pottery, okay? And you know what? I was going to ask my, my my partner, and I did, and my partner said, eh, I mean, do you think you really make money on it? And I said, you know what? I'm going to keep the job that I have now or keep doing what I'm doing right now, and I'm going to do this on the side and see, you know, right now I just need to get myself creative. Okay, boom. Okay, so that's one and two. See how you see how we're progressing? And three is you're not desperate to do it because you're not trying to do it for money. You're like, you know what? Oh my God, I would love to put this stuff on Etsy and love to put myself out there and then make this my full time profession. However, I know that it's not going to just happen overnight. So I need to really like pump my brakes a little bit. So now you've taken the desperation out. Number four is remember, time, time only exists here. And you got to be able to at least get comfortable with what you're doing without the expectation of it being the next best thing. And so you say, gosh, I'm so busy. How am I going to fit this into my day? Well, let me let me really look at my day. Where can I, you know, fit an hour here? What are some things I need to do first, right? Because you might not just grab a, a thing in a, the little plate. I don't know. I don't do pottery. The little plate and the little petal. And it's like a ghost moment where we're like, ah, you know, me and Patrick Swayze are chilling. It, it's, it's not one of those moments, Maybe I have to look and say, okay, well, what supplies will I need? Will I have a space big enough? Do I need to put something down on the floor? See, this is why your desperation and time go hand in hand, step three and step four. Because if you're desperate to do it, you're not, you're going to skip steps. You're going to be like, oh my God, I better hurry up and do this because I want to put this up for Christmas holiday. And now you go out, you buy all these supplies. Next thing you know, you have no clue what you're doing. And now you're pissed off. And now this project in which you've spent thousands of dollars on or hundreds of dollars on is now sitting in a corner collecting dust because you just don't have any time to do it. And you don't really know how to start or where to start because you, st- you skip steps. Okay. And then number five is, you know what though? It's fine. I'm a little afraid to do it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm willing to take the chance. Okay. So these do go hand in hand, but the Fifth one is kind of your foundational one. Be with, well, knowing what you want is really your foundation, but being able to figure that out even when you're afraid, even when you're not sure what the outcome can be. And desperation will never serve you. Remember, tip three, desperation won't serve you. So if you're doing things desperate, you know, this is why you get stuck a lot of times in jobs and relationships, because you're like, oh my God, well, what if I'm like not with a person? Well, okay, that's great because then you can work on yourself. Yeah, but then I'm alone. Okay, whoa, what? You got to be alone before you can be good for somebody else because you got to be able to sit with yourself. And then if you're afraid to do that, that's definitely when it's time to make an appointment with me, right? Because you have to be willing to face the fear and be uncomfortable. And so those are five tips to start you with. So do them kind of in order there, right? With the fifth one always kind of being your overview of, hey, this is going to seem a little weird. I might not feel smart enough. I might feel dumb enough. I might feel like I'm behind in time. I might feel like, you know, okay, just pump your brakes. Take a deep breath. It's seriously okay. You only got right now, which means you can't always be on go mode either. So you have to be willing to face your fear of like, well, if I'm not giving it like, 365 days, 564 hours a day, it's not going to work. Well, no, it's definitely not going to work because now you're going to be totally burned out. You're going to have no motivation whatsoever. So you got to be willing to go, okay, well, I guess if I do take the weekend off and go do something fun, even though I think I should be doing more, I'll be okay. You got to face the fear of that too. So fear is in many forms because that goes into your desperation because then desperation and time and fear all go hand in hand because you're like, oh my God, I can't take Saturday and Sunday off. I'm not even done getting what I need to get done by Monday. Yeah, okay. So then burn yourself out and let me know how that works for you. So that is a great place to start. So first ask yourself the number one question at the beginning of everything before you even start with what you like. Why do you want to change? Oh, because I'm unhappy. Mm -hmm. Go deeper. Well, I mean, I just feel lost. Okay. Lost how? Well, I mean, I don't know. Empty. Okay, well, what does empty feel like to you? You got to keep like notching it down until you get to the desperation part or the um, 
reasoning as to why you want to do it in the first place? And are you looking to fill a void? Or do you feel like you've always wanted to do it, but somebody told you you couldn't? So there's always going to be the why first. And then you're going to do the rest of your tips. But remember, you will only ever get unstuck if you are truly willing to put in the work. And that means being uncomfortable. That means not being desperate. That means creating a plan. That means being okay with other people not being okay with it. That means not having to over explain yourself. That means really sitting with yourself and knowing that you are capable. And if something doesn't work in plan A, it's perfectly fine. You got a plan B. And always remember, failure isn't failure. Failure is 100% learning. Check it out.